Hello everybody, Sigark here, back with another educational video for The Infected. In this video, I'm going to be explaining how the power system works in The Infected. I'm going to teach you about the four different buildable structures used in power grids, mainly focusing on the details that the game doesn't tell you about. I will also go over the build strategy that I use that will help you get your power system up and running as quickly as possible. Within the power tab, there are four buildable structures. Three of them require a tech blueprint, those being the wind turbine, the solar panel, and the solar battery. The control panel does not require any kind of blueprint. Two of the four are power generating structures, the wind turbine and the solar panel. As far as placement goes, it doesn't really matter where you place the power items in relation to each other. I have them set up like this just because it looks somewhat realistic. You could, in theory, have your solar panels placed indoors. So if you place them inside here, it would, st even though it's a solar panel, it'll still pick up the sunlight, and the same goes for the wind turbine. Distance isn't really a factor either when placing the items. So you could, in theory, have your wind turbine placed on the other side of the map, and it would still generate power as if it was placed inside your base. So the wind turbine is going to generate 20 power at all times, whereas the solar panel will generate up to 40 power. So the way that works is it'll generate 40 power from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., so from dawn to dusk, and then it'll generate a little less power during a sunrise and a sunset. Also, when you're under conditions like this, like during a blizzard, the solar panels are going to generate a little less power. So typically, my total power would be 520. So it seems like the blizzard is cutting my power from the solar panels in about half. So instead of 120 power, I'm getting about 60 from the solar panels because of the blizzard. The solar battery is going to store power up to about 1,000 per battery. The battery will charge or drain depending on the power available readout in the control panel. So let me show you what that looks like. So this power available. 110 so my batteries are fully charged so i have three batteries so it's giving me a little bit over 3000 power stored if this power available readout goes negative it'll slowly start to drain this power from the batteries if i was at negative 40 power available it would drain this by about one per second and then if it was minus 100 let's say it would drain it by about three or four per second also keep in mind even though it's called a solar battery it's not only going to be charged by the solar panel, the wind turbines will charge the batteries as well. So don't get uh, hung up on that. Either source will, will charge the batteries. And then the last item, the control panel here, they basically give you no description uh, in the game of what it does, but it's fairly self-explanatory. It controls the power grid. So on the right-hand side here, you can toggle on and off each of your components. A few things that it doesn't tell you though, is that there's essentially one power grid for the entire map. So right here in this base, I have one control panel. If I went to a whole nother side of the map and built a second control panel, it would transfer over all the power I have at this base to the second one. All right, so as far as a basic build strategy goes, to get your power grid up and running, you're gonna first need the tech blueprints and build the materials required for each item. To get these as quickly as possible, first build your mineral extractors, at least one per site. If you kind of get hung up on the mineral extractors and how they work, I do have an entire video uh, explaining the mineral extractors and where to build them. And I also go into detail about which site has each mineral. So I'll link that in the description below. The reason that this is a good idea is because while you're out searching for the blueprints, you'll have the mineral extractors running simultaneously. So by the time you get home with the blueprints, you'll have all the minerals there. So you can start building your power grid after that. Keep in mind that the blueprints are randomly placed amongst the town. So it may take you a few days to find them. The only other resource that you may need is lead ore. So if we look in here, so for the wind turbine, you need five lead per, and the solar battery needs five lead ingots as well. So the lead can't be mined by the mineral extractors. You'll have to find them in caves. And I also just made a video about lead ore. And if you use that guide, uh, you'll be able to get 100 or more lead ore per day. So I'll also link that video in the description below as well. 
So once you have your power grid up and running, there's a few things that I would suggest to leave on running at all times. The first being the oil extractors. So I have two right here at this base. So the oil extractors are gonna give you oil cans every few minutes. Oil cans are pretty essential because they're gonna be used to craft Kevlar. Kevlar is always useful because it's the main ingredient for armor. So your chest armor, leg armor, your boots, all of those are gonna use Kevlar. And you're gonna need a lot of oil cans for that. So I pretty much leave my oil extractors running 24 seven. I never really turn them off. Another thing that you probably wanna leave running too when you're getting started is a stone grinder. So I don't use mine too much anymore. As you see here, I have 500 iron fragments already stored in there and 950 sand. So I've been running that for a little while. But uh, once you get this going and you start throwing uh, stones in there, it's gonna give you a ton of iron fragments and you can throw those iron fragments on a brick forge and those will uh, give you a ton of iron ingots and it goes pretty quickly too. The last thing you're probably gonna wanna leave on is the oil pump. So the oil pump is probably one of the last items you're gonna build just because it does require a lot of different resources to build. It also does have the highest power requirement, but it's gonna automate all your mineral extractors and it's definitely worth the power it uses. It, it does use 150 power. An example of a structure that you probably don't need to leave on powered all the time would be the water house. So when you turn on the water house, it's automatically going to water any of your plants in your, in your greenhouse. So for example, this plant here, no water at all. So if I run over here to the water house, I'm going to press E, turn the pump on, and I think you have to leave it on for a few seconds, so. So there, I just turned it off. And that should simultaneously water every single plant in my greenhouse, so I'll show you how that works. So now I go up here, and this plant is fully watered, and that will do the same for every single plant in here. All right, and just as one final thing that I wanted to show you, so I'm in my control panel here, and I have a third oil extractor that I built a little bit south here, so it's at this site. And uh, it's. I just wanted to demonstrate that it's connected to the power grid at this base. So I have this power grid built here and I can build structures anywhere I want and they're gonna draw from the power from here. So I'll demonstrate that for you now. So in here it's off. I'm gonna leave it off. I'm gonna go down south and turn it on from there. And as you see, I have enough power. I have 170 power and it's gonna require 100 power to turn on. So. Let me run down there real quick and I'll show you how that works. So I'm down here at the southern part of the map. My base was up here. I have this lonely oil extractor here, so if I press E on it, you can see right now it's powered off. It's not doing anything, but I can easily just click power it on and then um, it's going to start the four minute countdown and start generating oil cans. So I can, in theory, build a whole nother base right here, start building structures, and it's gonna draw the power from my first base. So that's a pretty cool feature. Again, it's not something the game really tells you, but uh, it's good to know, just in case you wanna build a secondary base, you won't have to build a whole nother power grid on top of the first one, so keep that in mind. All right, everybody, so thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. Please like and subscribe and check out my other guides, and I will see you next time.